It's healing time. Today's topic is huge. The enemy has decided to declare war, and it's a sexual war. So many men and women in the church are struggling and in pain and feel isolated from their looking at porn or lusting or acting out in other ways. It is time to win the battle. And today's topic on clean will equip you to help those you love to be free and be sexually pure, whether they're struggling, they're young men, or they just want to be free. So join us today as we cover how to equip you to help people be clean. In a world that is constantly sexualizing everything from toothpaste to tires? And they're attacking our children sexually with ideas way before they should have those ideas. This is worse than any time in world history. So how can we remain sexually pure? How can we help others be sexually pure? This is what we're going to talk about. Any time that the enemy raises a standard, God himself always has a solution. And here at Healing Time, we really believe that solution is you. That's right, at home, watching TV, you can open your home, you can be a solution. So today, we are going to talk about clean and you starting a clean group to equip men for this battle that's happening I mean, every time they open their cell phone. And sadly, this battle also is affecting women in record numbers. Christian women are looking at pornography and getting involved with online behaviors in such record numbers. This is a war. And in the resource clean, a proven plan for men committed to sexual integrity, I share so many biblical ideas that have really helped people get and stay clean for the rest of their life. I can't tell you how many times people said, Doug, I watch clean and I've been clean since then. And yes, it is possible to live a clean life. In my office, there's a polygraph of mine and it says I've been free from pornography, any behavior uh, outside my marriage, which I've never cheated for over 36 years. Okay, you can be measurably clean for the rest of your life. Now, I want to share with you an email I have received from a lady in Africa who has asked me the question I have heard so many times from other women. Dr. Weiss, why does my husband look at pornography? What is so attractive about it? And I don't, I don't get it. Why am I not enough for him? Now, in this email, you can hear the pain. You can feel the pain. Um, this woman feels inadequate. She feels less attractive and confused because She's disgusted when she looks at the pornography. Now, in this segment, I want to share with you what the man has done to his brain so that he is attracted to lusting after women, especially naked women. The scripture gives us a quote and it gives us insight about what is often not understood. I remember in Bible school at seminary asking my professors repeatedly to explain this scripture to me, but they couldn't. Then, as a psychologist, I did some research on sex and the brain, and the scripture came alive to me. And I have been sharing this information at men's conferences for decades because it really can set you free. Now, in the scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 18, you might have heard the scripture, flee sexual morality. All other sins a person commits are outside of the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Now, I would ask my professors, and these are very smart, godly men and women, why is this sexual sin so different than other sins? Why does it say all others except this one? Now, when I went and I studied the neuroscience, 
this really explained the sexual sins hurt on the body. And this has been studied so many times. Now, what we have learned and what we understand during the sexual experience of any kind, real, imaginary, with pornography, whether it's been abuse or rape, no matter what the sexual encounter is, when we have an orgasm, we get these incredible, powerful chemicals released in the brain. Actually, it's the most powerful chemicals your body releases for anything. It literally attaches and glues and hungers and crave for whatever that experience was, real, imaginary, pornography, and even if it was abuse. Now, remember, God's design for sexuality was marriage so that this glue would actually help you desire and connect and want your spouse. They would look better than anybody else on the planet because of this neurological attachment. You'd be so glued to them that you wouldn't desire anybody else. That is what God designed. Now, as an expert in sexual addiction and the president of the American Association for Sexual Addiction Therapy, I have done over 5,000 sexual and and sexual self-behavior inventories of men and women, over 5,000 easily. So I'm not someone who's just sitting on a rock talking about something. This is what I do day in, day out for the last 35 years. Now, men with sexual addiction who struggle looking or lusting and checking out porn or checking out women, these, these guys who struggle in this area mostly started in their teen years. And they've done this thousands of times prior to marriage. And women don't know this, especially if, you know, they're Christian guys and you don't even know to ask and they're not going to tell. So pornography was the first wife before marriage. And it was that chemically reinforced, causing the body to desire these images. That is what it means to sin against your own body, to for this lust to continue to grow and desire things that are inappropriate because it's kind of like uh, Pavlov's dog, ring the bell, feed the dog, right? And so these, these young boys and these young men, they're gluing to lust and in death. They're, they're finding these images very attractive because of the chemical reinforcement. And this is a huge part as to why men and women find porn so attractive. They keep doing it even when it doesn't make sense. They keep doing it even when it's hurting their marriage. Now, this is a real battle, and men and women are fighting this alone, and they're not winning by the millions in churches all across the world. And if you don't believe me, go ask a pastor how many times he's had to deal with pornography or infidelity. Ask what the church is doing to help the situation, and ask what you can do to maybe help the situation. Wives suffer significantly in this situation. Now, I did a survey early in my career with 1,400 pastors in the 1990s, and they were asked the question, if someone would ask to lead a group on sexual purity, would they say yes or no? And it was in the high 90% that they would say yes. Now, when we come back, I'm going to share with you another revelation from God's Word about answering this woman's question, why does he look at porn? So stay tuned. I want to strongly encourage you to get the whole series on clean. This battle is winnable. We can not only help guys who are struggling, we can prevent our young men from having to do this battle if they have the right tools and the right understanding of the Word of God, how to use the Word of God. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Yet so many men are trapped. Get the clean stuff, start a clean group, and where there's a clean group, there will be clean men. Men, it's time to get and stay clean. Call 800-568-9488 to order your clean book, DVD set, and journal, or go online at HealingTimeMinistries.com. It is time to win this fight. Well, welcome back, and thanks for joining us and staying with us on this very important topic that is assaulting the church and is really the biggest attack in our generation. We all know someone who has fallen to sexual issues. And this is a big issue. And we serve a big God who always has solutions and always uses his people to get the solutions to others, even the world. And that is why at Healing Time, we are so focused on mobilizing the body to do its healing ministry. Every cell of the body is a healing cell. And if each one of us 
had a healing type group of some kind using some material, we could easily heal so many people in the church. The church doesn't need to stay under attack. She is the greatest army on the earth and she's guaranteed to win. If you read the book, she's guaranteed to win. So consider this as we continue to share that you are the solution and whether you've ever struggled or you struggled a lot, either way, you could start a clean group. Now I promise to share another revelation as to why men are so attracted to pornography. And I've never heard anyone share this idea before. So I hope it's, it's helpful to you. And it's in the clean materials and we call it holy hologram. Now let's talk about a hologram. Now, objects are one dimensional in that they don't have feelings, they don't have a spirit, they don't have a relationship with God or others, these little things in the, in the glass, they don't really, they're not real, okay? And we are so multidimensional as, as creatures of God, it's incredible. To see someone just as a physical and checking out their features is only to see the smallest part of them. These women and men in porn, they are souls, they are sons, they are daughters of God, as well as sons and daughters of real people who really love them. They are sisters, they are brothers. To lust is to remove all of their soul, all of their spirit, all of their relationships, so you can make this multidimensional being one dimensional um, object that you choose to lust after. Now here's where the holy part of the hologram comes in. The scripture is really clear that God is holy. And I don't think anyone could argue that differently, that he is holy. In Genesis 1:27, we are created in the image of God. We are holy by design because he is holy. We were made holy. The fall happened and the creation was damaged, but we were made holy. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Now, temples are holy. Jesus in John 2, 19 and 20 is referring to his own physical body. Destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. Now, temples are definitely holy. And we are these temples of God. Our nakedness is holiness. It's designed to be exposed only in marriage as sacred. When a man or woman um, start looking at nakedness, they're actually seeing holiness. And what we seek out in nakedness, we are trying to seek holiness. Now, what happens when we turn that nakedness, which is holy, into sexual entertainment? Now, personally, it has a huge impact on us. Nationally, it has even a greater impact on this. Even in a local church, it can have a huge impact when you have 30 to 50% of the men trapped by this process in their secret worlds. But they want to be free. I know I've talked to thousands of them. They want to be living a clean life. They secretly ask God to deliver them but they need Jesus to help walk this journey out. And when I say Jesus, I mean Jesus with skin on him. I mean you. Now, when we come back, I want to talk more about some of the other impacts, but I really want to hone in on this because I have seen thousands of tears, and I mean thousands of tears. In my office, it's a concrete floor, and they have to mop it every week because there's tears there. And these are the tears of men who've been trapped, who've made mistakes. Maybe they committed infidelity or they've had other kinds of things. Their wife is crying because they've been devastated and they don't know what to do. And sometimes they go for Christian help and they don't know what to do. But there really is real help. When someone is leading a clean group, you're going to get exposed to some things that guys have done and you're going to be able to minister to them to say, it's okay. You're loved. God has forgiven you. See, this is a ministry of reconciliation, reconciling 
this dark secret world of internet pornography. And, and truly, if you don't have a porn blocker, go to our webpage, get a porn blocker. You should not have a cell phone that you can push a button and look at porn. Okay, that's a really simple strategy to help win this battle. Okay, don't have it uh, a phone without having protection. And we have a great porn blocker on the website. Do that, go to that, please do that. But this is a real war, but it's a secret war because the guys are at home and the women at home who are doing this, they don't tell anybody. And so in clean, we get to ask the questions. We get to encourage each other. We get to be vulnerable and honest. Even if you only do this with two or three guys, you will change their lives. I've had churches order hundreds and hundreds of these books, and they do it as a whole church to get the men clean. Because what happens is once you give men permission to talk, they'll talk. I remember I was in Juarez, Mexico with about 4,000 men, and I don't speak any Spanish. And as we went through the process and uh, I had them huddle up in groups of fours and fives and talk to each other, I mean, the tears came, the Holy Spirit fell. These men, for the first time in their lives, were able to say, yeah, that's me. I'm struggling. I need help. And they were able to pray with each other and encourage one another. I can't tell you how beautiful that is. And anyone who opens their home, opens their church, can have a healing time, clean group in that place. So I'm going to strongly encourage you, please, this is war and we need you. There's a battle and we need every soldier to be equipped to do the battle of sexual purity. You don't have to have a problem to help guys. And if you struggle, help the ones because you know what it feels like to have that guilt and shame. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And where a clean group is, there are clean men. Get the clean book, DVD set, and journal. Call 800-568-9488 or go online at HealingTimeMinistries.com. We need strong men to stand up and join together. It is time to win this fight. Thank you for considering giving to Healing Times Ministries. First of all, I want you to know that your money goes to production and everything that goes into the process of helping people so that they can be equipped in all the areas that we can to help people lead groups in their churches. Our heart is to have 100,000 groups in churches all around the world. Now, before I would ask you for anything, I give to this ministry and I do not take one dime. So please join us at Healing Times Ministries to heal the church and heal the brokenhearted around the world. Welcome back. So what is the damage that is done when we don't help those in our church and our community who are struggling with these issues sexually? And what are they experiencing? I want to take you to another verse you probably never heard a sermon on. And I love that because I want to help educate you as a believer. Okay, this scripture is tucked away in the prophetic book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. It says this, Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring from wineskins till they are drunk, so that he can gaze on their naked bodies. See, they didn't have pornography back then. So these guys would get them drunk and they would just lift, you know, you get the idea. Remember, this was a long time ago, okay? But this is what happens. So what happens to these people that look at this nakedness, this holiness? It says this, you will be filled with shame instead of glory. Now, when someone looks at porn, they feel shame. And I've worked with thousands of men and women who are addicted to pornography, who definitely fulfill this scripture. They feel shame. They just don't feel guilty, like I did something bad. They feel shame. I am something bad. They can feel unlovable, like if someone really knew me, they wouldn't love me. They can feel that God can't really love them. Now, although this is not in any way true, they feel that way because that is a result of looking at nakedness, that's holiness. That's why they don't talk about it. And that's why they can get stuck. Now, 
we talked about looking that can cause shame and damage to a person. And this is really why we want every church, every church to have a clean group. So men can win this battle instead of being casualties in this war that the enemy has declared on the church, on individuals, and on our culture. Nobody watching America in the last couple decades cannot notice the big push to be sexually impure. It is everywhere. So why is the enemy trying so hard to turn our culture and other global powerful nations to become like Sodom and Gomorrah? Because the devil knows God. He knows the Father intimately. And he knows he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that this campaign has worked to destroy world cultures in the past to get them sexually perverse. Now, I want to go back to the Word of God in Jeremiah 3, 9. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, she defiled the land. The land became defiled. Our collective sexual impurity has a direct impact on how God sees a land and how he responds to a land. In the case of verse 8, God actually said he divorced Israel because of this type of behavior. Now, God doesn't like divorce, but he did it because this is consistent with his nature. Okay, to reject sexual impurity, and the enemy knows that. In Leviticus 18, the entire chapter lists all types of sexual unclean behaviors of what you should never do, what you don't do, and all that kind of stuff. And after making this huge list of sexual do nots, it says this in verse 27. All these things were done, talking about the sexual things, by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. You see, our collective sexual behavior as a culture determines how God sees a land clean or defiled. Now Moses continues in verse 28, And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. And you see history can repeat itself. The sexual uncleanness of a culture demands God's natural order, and the land itself will vomit that culture out. And we saw this the way that God had Israel be taken captive. Now, let's have a quick heart-to-heart. Uh, America and other cultures, it is by far, in America, by far the largest producer of, and distributor of pornography around the world. America is number one by far. And you see the sexualization of all forms in media, especially social media, which seems to be that, that, that whore that lays down with all nations trying to seduce the nations into sexual misconduct and sexual defilement. It's really, most social media is a porn store. So do you think God looks down on our nation and says clean, or does he say defiled? What about your state? Clean, defiled. What about your church? If 30, 50% or more of the men are struggling, clean or defiled? What would he say about me? What would he say about you? Clean or defiled? And this is why we do healing time. We really want you, whether you've never struggled or you struggled a lot, to help out, to, to help heal your church, your state, your land, your city, your local community, and start discipling men how to win this battle of sexual purity. Now, I really believe if we can raise a sexually pure church, that we can change the way our culture is going. If you or someone else, and I'm not talking about the pastors, Get involved and start a clean group. Do the series. You can make a huge difference. You can do it in your church. Talk to your pastor. But you can also do it in your home. Get six, eight, ten guys together and say, hey, I want to go through this. I want to equip everyone in our, in our circle to know how to fight this battle and stay clean. I want everyone to have glory, not shame. Because when you don't do these things, you don't feel shame. 
Okay, at the core of you, you believe God can love you. You believe your wife can love you. You believe others love you. And you can be part of giving this gift to others by simply opening your heart, opening your home, or opening a church. Start a clean group and be a solution for this battle where you live. At Healing Times Ministry, one of the biggest healing times you will ever experience is when you let Jesus come into your heart, forgive you, and walk with you. I love being saved by Jesus. If you have yet to ask Jesus to come into your heart and your life, follow me in this prayer. Jesus, forgive me. Come into my heart, and I want to live for you. And then go to our website and push the button that says saved, and we got more information for you. Healing Time Ministries would not be on the air if it wasn't for people like you that love and want to heal the brokenhearted. Now, I need your support to be able to keep doing this. But before I ask you, let me tell you, I don't make a penny from Healing Times Ministry. I give to the ministry, I donate my time to the ministry, because you're going to donate your time to start groups. So I need some soldiers in this battle to heal the Church of Jesus Christ. I need your help to heal the church. So please join me in giving to Healing Times Ministry. Well, thank you so much for joining us at Healing Time. We dedicate our hearts to help equip you. Now, today's a big topic. We talked about the sexual battle that's going against our culture and against our church and against our children. We talked about how a person feels in pain and how they isolate because of that pain, and they feel unlovable, and they feel ashamed. No one has to feel that in your circle. We talked about how God looks at a nation, a state, a city, based on the sexual behavior. And we can see throughout history that God is true to himself, and he will re-landscape nations because of their behavior. And we're in a time where we need to convince God not to do that. We're in a time where we need him not to have to deal with his own church, his own family. We're in a time when men and women can be clean and free. We have the principles. We have the tools. I have over 35 years of seeing men and women get free every week. This is doable. I see marriages restored. I see men call back to their ministries. I see them double and triple their income in the first year. I see freedom. I know what freedom looks like, and it's amazing. If you could see what I've seen over 35 years, you would call right now and get the clean material and say, I got to do this, not just for me. I got to do it for my church, my family. I mean, people really need our help. And women, there's so many women who are damaged by this stuff, feeling less than, feeling disgusted, feeling hurt, feeling betrayed. We can stop the bleeding. So I really want to encourage you, get into a clean group, start a clean group, and do this thing. I really want you, and partners, thank you for supporting us in prayer and your resources. Thank you so much. Because of you, there will be groups all around the world where there is a healing time.